Okay, you may notice slightly different background. I'm at my camper right now, but I wanted to get a head start and record some videos. So this topic is a brief history of chemistry. So what are we gonna talk about? We're gonna talk about back as far as about the ancient Greeks and continue much closer to the present day. And we are not going to cover all of the history of chemistry. Again, this is brief. We're going to cover some major key points, some major key people in the uh, history of chemistry. Ready to get started? All right, here are the objectives. Pause and peruse if you desire. Okay, so again, we're going to start with the ancient Greeks. So prior to the ancient Greeks, natural objects were thought to consist of four basic elements, earth, air, fire, and water. The Greeks expanded this and were like, ah, actually, that's not the way it is. So 4th century BC, um, two key names, Democritus and Leucippus, they were philosophers. And they came up with the first parts of what would be considered um, the atomic theory. But they stated that matter is not infinitely divisible. You can't keep dividing matter into smaller and smaller particles. Matter consisted of fundamental indivisible particles called atoms. Now, the Greeks did not conduct experiments or use the scientific method. They thought the nature of the universe could be discovered by rational thought alone. Hence, they were philosophers. All right, next we have alchemists. Alchemists made advances in chemistry in the Middle Ages and Renaissance. Big gap, right? Okay, their goal was transmutation, the goal of alchemists. They wanted to convert one element into another, basically for the purpose of trying to transform cheap metals into gold. Many alchemists were frauds, but they did do some good and they did do some actual chemistry um, and some uh, helped with the discovery of elements like quicksilver, which we know as mercury. Now, modern chemistry, let's talk about that. 16th and 17th centuries, metallurgy. So the extraction of metals from ores. So ores are mined, they contain metals and metallurgy would be the extraction of those metals from the ore. Here's where the first systemic quantitative experiments were conducted. In 1661, uh, Robert Boyle from England wrote a book, The Skeptical Chemist, and he defined an element as a substance that cannot be broken down into two or more sim simpler substances by chemical means. And this led to the discovery of many elements, especially metals. Boyle also described the relationship between pressure and volume of air. So when we get to gas laws, we're going to hear his name again. Okay, continuing on with modern chemistry, Joseph Priestley, again in England, basically 1700s, he discovered oxygen gas. What he found is that many carbon containing compounds burn vigorously in oxygen, the process of combustion. He also discovered that the gas produced from fermenting beer is the same as one of the products of combustion. Now we know that this is carbon dioxide. And Joseph Priestley also discovered that that gas, the one that was produced by fermenting beer, one of the products of combustion, also that that gas when dissolved in water produced seltzer water. Now, fun fact about him, which I just find this interesting, his fermentation research was cut short when he fell into a vat of fermenting beer. That could have been awful. And brewers banned him as a result. They're like, I do not want this guy that falls into vats of beer anymore. Okay, modern chemistry continued. We're gonna move to France now, and we're gonna talk about Antoine Lavoisier who again, 1700s, he was also studying combustion, but he discovered what those products were in fact. So he discovered that the combustion of carbon containing substances with oxygen produced two products, carbon dioxide and water, and that life depends on a similar reaction. And we know that reaction as respiration, cellular respiration. He wrote the first chemistry text and is often referred to as the father of modern chemistry. And probably a big reason for that is he came up with the law of conservation of mass. Now remember a law is just a description, not an explanation, just tells you the way it is. So the law of conservation of mass, the mass of the reactants equals the mass of the product. So mass is not created or destroyed. Unfortunately, Lavoisier's life was cut short. He was 
executed by guillotine during the French Revolution. He, why, you might say? Well, he invested in a private corporation that was collecting taxes for the crown, and during the French Revolution, being tied to taxes and the crown was not a good match. Okay, some more advancements. John Dalton, the atomic theory in 1803. Joseph Gay-Lussac, um, late 17 to 1800s. He measured the volume of gas reactants and gas products. We're gonna see his name again when we get to gas laws, just like Boyle. And Amadeo Avogadro, now you may have heard of Avogadro's number. Um, and again, he's late 1700s to 1800s, and he found that equal volumes of different gases contained equal numbers of gas particles. That number is Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. All right, in class, we'll be doing a blue kit. Super fun. Okay, that's it. That's a brief look at the history of chemistry condensed into just these few short minutes. So I hope you learned something new today.